at Denali Montessori School, where the students in Miss Holman and Miss Jasmine's classes are learning all about the solids, liquids, and gases in our atmosphere. These first, second, and third graders might have a wide range of ages, but they all seem to be equally excited about science. This year, they're learning how solids become liquids and liquids turn to gases. When you heat up wax, it melts. But now, with the help of the KTVA Weather Lab, we're taking the lesson out of the classroom and into the sky, where they learn how clouds can change too. Some clouds are made of liquid, and others, like cirrus clouds, they're the highest clouds in the sky, and they're made of all ice. Are made of solids. Just ice. So you see those clouds up by Alaska? They also learned what happens when you change the temperature of the gases in air. The fire goes out and then it gets cold. cold and what happens to cold air it, it, comes it, comes it contracts and because the temperature is always changing so is the weather how can precipitation sometimes have solids or liquids she means snow rain or in between and that is our ktba weather lab question of the week inside clouds you'll generally find a combination of liquids and solids but a lot can happen between the clouds and the ground. If the precipitation starts as snow but runs into any air warmer than 32 degrees, it melts and changes to rain. If rain happens to fall through air colder than 32 degrees, it freezes, turning to sleet, which is just frozen raindrops. Freezing rain happens when the air is warmer than 32 degrees, but the ground is below freezing, forcing that rain to freeze on contact, forming a layer of ice. And if the entire column of air between the clouds and the ground stays below freezing, we of course get snow. The form of precipitation we see the least in Alaska is hail. Hailstones are complex layers of snow, melted snow, and ice that get bounced around the clouds, allowing them to grow even bigger before falling to the earth. Regardless of how that precipitation falls, it takes solids, liquids, and gases to make any kind of weather. <laughs> From the Weather Lab, meteorologist Melissa Fry, KTVA 11 News. We've got places to go. With summer break just three weeks away, these kindergartners have learned a lot in the last 150 days. But they're still learning something new every day. The desert is dry and the reason is clear. Its rainfall is less than 10 inches a year. They're learning about why scientists do experiments. All good scientists try things out to learn new things. And how we do them. So if we put this back in the cold, who has a hypothesis of what is going to happen? Push it all the way down inside. <laughs> Today, they're being introduced to technologies. Can you guys say barometer? Barometer. That help us better understand our world, like thermometers. And then if we take this outside in the summertime, that line's going to go right up to where it's hot. And green okay. screens. The magic of TV, allowing viewers to see weather maps that aren't really there. Meteorology is a brand new concept for the kindergartners here at College Gate Elementary School, but in their science lessons, they've spent a lot of time on forces and motion, and today they learned one of the biggest forces of nature is the wind. Why That is our KTVA Weather Lab question of the week. The wind blows because there are temperature differences across the globe, and where there are temperature differences, there are pressure differences. The wind always blows from high to low pressure because it doesn't like to be crowded and it wants to be in equilibrium. If air builds up in one area, it simply tries to move into an area with more space. The closer together high and low pressure are, the faster the wind blows. It's a bit abstract for these kindergartners to understand something they cannot see. But as we watch the wind blow, we can see the forces of nature at work. From the Weather Lab, meteorologist Melissa Fry, KTVA 11 News. I'm here at Inlet View Elementary School where the second and third graders in Mrs. Thatch's class have been learning all about Earth science this year. So I stopped by to share a little bit about how the weather works on that same globe. From tectonics to astronomy, 
These students are sharp. What's happening in this area of the world? It's hotter, and the other half of the Earth can be is cold. One side is the sun, and the other side is the moon. They have those concepts down, so their teacher is expanding their science lessons to include meteorology. First, by keeping track of each day's precipitation and cloud cover. The morning we do calendar, and the organizer gets to see, like, if it's sunny, rainy. They're quickly realizing both subjects are related. Because that sun is heating up one side of the earth, that side is going to have a lot of air that's expanding, right? Now they're learning the sun's role in the water cycle. We're going to pretend like this is the air above the earth. Explained by demonstrating rising air. That is cool. See that condensation on the outside of that glass? <laughs> we put an empty bottle in hot water, forcing the air inside to expand. <laughs> A balloon on top traps the rising air. What's happening? It's filling up with air. This is their first lesson about high and low pressure. The reason behind why the wind blows, which can be measured in different ways. How many miles per hour is in a knot? That is our KTVA Weather Lab question of the week. The short answer is one knot equals 1.15 miles per hour. Mariners use knots, literal knots on a rope, to measure their speed before speedometers were invented. They figured a mile was about 5,000 feet. So if a ship was traveling one mile per hour, they would go about 42 feet every 30 seconds. And here's what they discovered. If they tied knots in a rope every 42 feet, then tied a floating object to the end of the rope and threw it over the bow of a ship, they could determine their speed by counting how many knots passed in 30 seconds. Smart, huh? As the years went on, the measurements became much more precise and they're still used today. These Inlet View students now know how the weather travels the globe, measured in both miles per hour and knots. In the Weather Lab, meteorologist Melissa Fry, KTVA 11 News.